Across an area of over 600 square miles on the Terre Plain, plant and animal life abound in Nepal's largest nature reserve, Chitwan, or in Nepalese, in the heart of the jungle. Chitwan was created in 1962. Today, this land blessed by the gods is home to an ever-increasing number of animal species. Tigers, leopards, bison, bears, crocodiles, wild elephants, and some 400 bird species, not to mention the legendary Indian rhinoceros. Animals at Chitwan have a guardian angel, Yadav, a guide since 1982 who works at the Park Study and Veterinary Care Center, the Tiger Project. The center was founded in 1973 by the King of Nepal, His Majesty Birendra, in association with the WWF and the Smithsonian Institute of Washington, which invested half a million dollars in this project to save the animals. Yadav's job consists of keeping count of the animals, assisting the research groups that regularly come to work in the park and tracking sick or wounded animals in need of medical treatment. Yadav is a Newa. Eight years ago, he left his job as a truck driver, which is more dangerous, he says, than tracking rhinos, to live among the animals. Being a guide has heightened Yadav's senses, enabling him to anticipate and avoid danger. Like the felines around him, sharp sight is his best means of defense in the jungle. In Chitwan's tropical humidity, a python lies in wait for its prey. Although it isn't poisonous, the python is still a potential danger to humans because of its size. It can grow up to 10 meters in length. This one is harmless. It's only four meters long. Having been disturbed, it moves off to seek more manageable prey. Taking nothing more than a stick and a straw basket full of supplies necessary for jungle survival, Yadav sets off to make a rhinoceros count on the island of Bandajola. The biggest animal in the reserve, after the elephant, is the rhino. Considered sacred throughout Southeast Asia, this animal is surrounded by many beliefs. Wondrous medicinal properties are attributed to every part of its body. This, of course, only encourages poaching. After half a day's walk through the jungle, he now has to navigate the river for another five hours. rhinos are there as expected. Every evening they cross the river to graze all night on the good island grass.
Night falls quickly in these parts, and Yadda prepares to spend the night on the river's smallest island, away from the wild animals. He fashions a shelter made of leaves and dead wood and warms himself by the fire. He will cook rice, which is of no interest to the animals. At a distance of several hours from the river on foot, an enormous rock covered with vegetation offers its rare visitors an unrestricted view over the reserve. This is black rock. From this height, the foothills of the Himalayas stand out sharply, crowned by mist. Under a sea of clouds beats the heart of the jungle. This morning, Yadav encounters an army patrol. The park is guarded night and day by 130 armed men stationed in different guard posts around the reserve. They ask Yadav if he's seen any signs of possible poachers. Yadav has just noticed traces of blood from a rhino. It is February, the beginning of the mating season. Fighting for a mate or territorial domination can be very violent, and an animal may die from its wounds. Our guide is extremely cautious. A wounded animal can be ferocious, Yadav is aware that a false move could be fatal, but he must get near enough to examine the wounds. Weighing two tons and measuring one meter eighty at the withers, this beast is incredibly vigorous and can charge up to 25 miles an hour. Yadav has detected a bad gash on the animal's left flank and a festering wound on its belly. If these injuries aren't disinfected right away, the animal has little chance of surviving. Yadav must report his findings to the Tiger Project without delay. Tomorrow, he'll come back with an elephant, an excellent vantage point on nature and its creatures, in order to better inspect the animal's injuries. But at dawn, a surprise awaits him. The rhino has taken refuge in a pond. It is now impossible to check the wounds, and they will become rapidly infected in the stagnant water. A rhino usually retreats from the formidable bulk of an elephant, but this one, in spite of Yadav's patient efforts, is determined to stay in the water. The animal is even aggressive. Suddenly, it turns on the elephant. Yadav doesn't want to provoke a fight which could be mortal for both animals. <laughs> Further on, he allows his elephant to enjoy a well-deserved dip in the water. Okay. 
On the way back, Yadav decides to visit a neighboring village. Scattered across the Chitwan Reserve are small villages belonging to the Tharas, the first people to inhabit the Tere Plain. Originally from northern India, they migrated nearly 300 years ago when the Tere was still covered by forest and swamp. Malaria had made access to it impossible, but the Tharas were immune for some mysterious reason. With nothing to hinder their growth, the population increased from 36,000 in 1950 to 100,000 in 1960. Unfortunately, such rapid growth also means more deforestation to provide for more arable land. This is a major problem in a reserve whose purpose is wildlife conservation. Yadav pulls his elephant up to the house of the village chief. The old chief became a legend one day when the grunting of two battling rhinos filled the entire village. The defeated animal plunged into the water. Thinking it was dead and joking around with his friends, Port Jesse, who was already village chief, brashly dared to climb onto the animal. As he leapt onto its back, the rhino woke up and thundered off in a rage. The young chief clung on and was saved by a low branch which he managed to grab onto, surviving with only a few scratches. In the chief's younger days, there was little concern about wildlife. Indeed, for nearly a century until 1950, the king of Nepal used to go hunting here with Maharajas and European monarchs. But pressure from public opinion and international conservation groups finally ended the killings. Today, only a few poachers persist in hunting the horn of the Chitwan rhino. Because members of the Tiger Project have decided to help the wounded rhino, Yadav and the Mahouts make preparations in the manner of the great hunting expeditions of the past. Accompanied by a veterinarian, the center's director, a marksman, and a dozen mahouts, Yadav heads towards the jungle on the other side of the Rapti River. At this time of year, the routes are impassable and the rivers too high to be crossed by jeep. Only elephants are capable of getting around these obstacles. It takes about three hours to reach the area near the wounded rhino. Once there, the veterinarian prepares his materials. As Yadav watches the marksman get his hypodermic needle ready, he thinks of the old Taro chief. When Chitwan was a hunting ground from 1846 to 1950, his friend went on hunts with the Rana princes. For George V's visit in 1911, they rounded up more than 600 elephants from all over Nepal. In one week, 39 tigers, 18 rhinos, four bears, and eight leopards were slaughtered.
Thanks to Yadov's skill, the wounded rhino is easily spotted on the plain. The rhino cannot be treated under the blazing sun. It must be driven into the shade of the trees. The driving technique used has to be faultless. Just as in the great hunts of the past, a dozen elephants are lined up in a V. Slowly, they drive the wounded animal towards the marksman and his hypodermic dart. The rhino, apparently exhausted, gives in without resistance. Yadav, however, remains cautious. He has two scars on his leg, left by the incisors of a rhino that attacked him two years ago. Knocked out by the shot, the animal is still dangerous. Only a few minutes are needed for the drug to take effect. The veterinarian gets to work. A covering is placed over the animal's eyes to prevent it from panicking should it awaken unexpectedly. The rhino has two serious injuries. A deep stab made by a horn behind its leg and a bite which has ripped up its underside. The infection is already at an advanced stage. Identification of the rhino is made by estimating its height and weight. After cleaning the wounds, two types of antibiotics are applied. <laughs> When all these operations are completed, only half an hour later, an antidote injection is given in order to wake the animal up. Yadav has been covering this vast territory for eight years. Yet he never fails to be amazed by a life saved, by the animals which are slowly repopulating the area. Now he's home, and he will tell his waiting wife and children how one of the 400 rhinos that live in Chitwan is gambling about once again in the heart of the jungle, on the other side of the Rapti River.